Good morning, investors, and welcome back to my channel where we talk all things property investing in the UK, keeping it real from the coalface. Good morning, investors. I hope you're well. I've got my coffee. I'm raring to go. It's first thing in the morning. And today I wanted to share with you how you can conduct your due diligence when you are looking for a new investment area. What are the things that we need to consider? So I've got a few points in this workshop that I think that you should consider and things that have helped me in the past when I've looked for new HMO specifically investing areas. So let me have a slurp of my coffee and let's do this. Okay, so the things that we need to consider, first and foremost, number one, let me get the right colour ink. Does the area have Article 4 direction? Now, what's Article 4 direction? This isn't an Article 4 lesson, but I have got an Article 4 lesson if you go into my homepage and scroll through all of the workshops. But very briefly, Article 4 is where the council have removed permitted development rights. And that means you can no longer convert a normal house into a small house of multiple occupation for up to six sleeping people under permitted development. Now, if you don't have Article 4, you can do that all day long. So it's not going to stop you from investing. You will have to apply for planning permission. Or if you are buying a HMO that already has planning permission, or it was already a HMO before Article 4 came in, it would have grandfather rights. But you need to be aware of whether or not it does have Article 4, because if you are purchasing a property that is already HMO, in Article 4, you will still need to establish whether or not that property has got the correct planning permission. And especially if you're going for lending, because your lending company, your mortgage provider, will ask you for proof anyway. And if you can't provide proof, you'll probably have to provide something called a Certificate of Lawful Use and Development, a CLUD certificate. So first of all, does the area have Article 4? How do we know? Um, unfortunately, there is no blanket Article 4 map. Nothing like that exists. Some websites have got their own Article 4 maps that they've created themselves for their own area, but unfortunately there is no one generic map across the country. So the only thing you're going to have to do really is go online and just type in Article 4 in, I don't know, Hull, and see what comes back. Now, I can tell you whether there are Article 4 in lots of different areas, but, you know, it's, I mean, the country's a big place, right? So go online. And if you can't find it online, then phone the HMO officer. Sorry, no, don't phone the HMO officer. Phone the planning officer and ask the planning officer whether or not there is Article 4. Now, don't forget, folks, we're talking about Article 4. Article 4 removes the permitted development rights for anything. So your area might have Article 4, but it might not be for HMO. It might be because the area's got, um, it's in a conservation area, which might mean you can't remove the chimney or you can't remove a bay window or something similar. So just make sure that it is for HMO. And if you have got it, then it's not necessarily going to stop you from investing provided you target properties that are already HMOs. <clears throat> okay, so let's have a tick for number one. Article 4 direction. Now what's next, number two? We need to know whether or not the property um, is going to rent. So it's all good and well, you've got a great deal and the, there is no Article 4, it's in a great location, it's nice and safe, it would lend itself perfectly for HMOs, but is there any supply? So we've got supply versus demand. <clears throat> So how do we work out whether that property has enough supply versus demand? How do we know whether or not you're going to be able to rent it out? So there are a lot of things you can do here. Now the first thing that you would, or I would suggest you do, is go on to spareroom.co.uk. Spareroom. .co.uk. Now, Spare Room is a website that predominantly is for house shares or flat shares. And we get probably, well, 
98% of our tenants probably come from spare room. Now, there are people out there that say, look, put out a test advert and, and, and see what happens. Now, I'm going to say don't do that. Now, I do things differently um, because if you put a test advert out there, well, first of all, um, it's not lawful because there are regulations surrounding false advertising. And number two, if you put a test advert in your area, and if your price is £350 on your test advert, and your, comp your competitors are 360 370 you might force them to bring their price down, and actually it's not, it's not real. So I'm going to say don't do test adverts, I don't like them. The first thing you should do on Spare Room is if you go into the top of the search bar, and you'll see uh, Rooms Wanted. And then you can type the area code in, or sorry, the postcode, and see who or how many people come back that are actively looking for rooms in your area. Then you've got the other option of looking for rooms available. Okay, rooms wanted versus rooms available. Now, that's your first indication. Now, it's not always going to give you the best results, but you will see how many rooms are wanted. So let's say there are 500. How many rooms are available? 100, bingo. You know that that's a good supply versus demand. But the problem is with looking at figures like this is very often people will put their profiles up and they won't take them down once they've found a room. And of course, there are people doing false adverts. But it's the first step and it will give you an okay indication. Now, if I did that in my area, I know that that would be the other way around. And if I was investing for the first time, that might put me off. So it's not the utopia of due diligence. It just gives you a rough idea of what's happening out there in the market, okay? Now, the next element, rather than putting a fake advert on Spare Room, if you go into the advert for the, if you go into the adverts in your area for properties that are available, they've got um, a reference number with a hashtag. So it's a hashtag and a, a few digits, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what I teach my students to do is, why don't you target five adverts that are already there, take down the reference numbers because you can search by reference number, and over a period of maybe four weeks, watch those adverts and see how long it takes for those adverts to disappear. And then that will tell you how long it's taking people to sell rooms. Now that's a way more ethical way of um, doing your due diligence and putting out a fake advert. So target the advert with the unique reference number. Okay, let's give that one a tick. That's spare room. Now next on the list, how else can we work out whether a property is going to be in a good area? Let's think outside the box here. Now, not many people you know, talk about agents very much in the whole of these processes, but the next element is talk to an agent. Agents are there to rent property and to sell property. We are there to do pretty much the same. So let's come together a little bit more. So I would suggest that you contact probably five agents and say to the agent, look, hello, I'm Rick and I'm looking to invest in the area and I'm looking for HMOs. Now, when I do it, I might be looking for somebody to manage it for me. So I'm just having a chat at the moment. And if you could just let me know the following information, please. And we're going to be asking them, number one, How is demand in the area? Okay, so how is the demand in the area for HMO rooms? And we're gonna be asking five people, remember, and we're gonna take an average of what they tell us. The next element we're gonna be asking them is, how many voids do they have now? As a percentage of the whole of their HMO portfolio. Because we need to know that. And then the next element is, on average, how long does it take them to sell a HMO room? And those are the questions that we need to know. Now, if you're doing students and you need to be having this conversation with the housing officer at the university, but if you're just doing working professionals, then we need to be talking to the agents. So we're gonna ask five different agents the same questions, and that will be able to, and that'll give you a really good indication on what the area is like. You're gonna get five different answers, but then you can at least work out what the average is. 
And if every agent is saying, how is, well, if you ask, how is demand, and every agent is saying, crap, then you know it's crap. How many rooms have you got that avoid 50%? Oh dear. And on average, how long is it taking you to sell a HMO room? Six months. If they all tell you the same thing, you know, to steer away from that area, okay? So talk to your agents. So first of all, article four direction. Number two, supply versus demand by checking spare room. Number three, talk to your agents, really important. So what's next on our list then? So one of the last things we need to do is network. So get yourself into the Facebook groups. I've got a Facebook group, it's called the HMO and Property Community Group. We've got 16,000 active members. Get yourselves in these groups and do some networking and ask the people that are out there doing it at the moment. Now, here's where that might fall down a little bit. So some people, most people uh, want to help. Most people are honest and genuine and they would like to go out there and help you as much as possible. But there are some people that will see you as competition. And that's where networking can give you the wrong information. Because if you, I mean, I always jokingly say it in my presentations, there are no deals in my area. Um, there might well be, but it's just a joke. But if you go to a networking meeting and you say, you know, what's the area of, I don't know, press that in like for HMOs and even if it's really good the HMO investors there don't want competition of course they don't so they might not tell you the truth but you do need to do a little bit of let's dip your toe in the water in terms of networking okay but beware and then finally folks you know finally you just gotta have to do it just <laughs> JFDI, you know what that stands for. Just do it. Because um, you, there's only so much due diligence that you can do. And if you get to this point and you're like, well, you know, I think it might be a good area, but I'm still not sure, then you're never going to take any action. Sometimes you've just got to get out there and do it. Now, I, what I say is that HMOs will work everywhere. Now, we're in some very obscure areas that you wouldn't think would work, um, but they do, because if you've got the right product, and if you've got the right price, and you're a good manager, then the HMOs, real, they, they will work all over the place, because people need somewhere to live, people need affordable accommodation, and if you've got your product right, they will come to you. So yes, do your due diligence, don't over procrastinate, put your stake in the ground, all right, and make sure that you put one foot forward. Now, the last thing that I want to cover is how far, where can I write this? So distance, I'm gonna put it there. Distance from where you live. If you're investing and managing yourself, I would say, look, just try and invest as close to where you live as possible because HMOs aren't passive. You're gonna to have to get out there. You're gonna to have, to, to have to show tenants around. You're gonna to have to respond to maintenance initially whilst you're setting up your business. So if you can do that as close to home as possible, then that's what I suggest. So stick your stake in the ground in your hometown. If you're investing and you're giving it to a manager to run for you, then it's not relevant. You can invest anywhere you want to in the country. And you might say to me, but Rick, I'm in the center of London. Okay, I understand that. Um, and if you can't afford to buy in London, you are going to have to look outside. But, you know, um, how far is it is it going to be? How long is it going to take you to get to that property if somebody called you to say that the power has tripped or something? As long as you've got systems in place, I would say no more than traveling an hour there and an hour back. So that's a two hour journey, you know, both ways with traffic. Um, but if you're doing rent to rent and lease options, London may very well work for you perfectly anyway. So that's it for today's workshop, folks. Um, I haven't given that a tick. Let's give that a tick, ka-ting, and a big tick for ka-ting. Um, just gotta get out there and do it, folks. So if you like my workshops, please do subscribe. Don't forget to hit that like button and please do leave me a comment because the comments keep the workshops interactive. And if you've got any questions, I am responsive and I will reply back to you through the comments. So until the next time, folks, have a great day.